Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in the day an AMD APU like this one meant that you could play some of the latest PC games with respectable frame rates and no discrete graphics card. This A8 series processor features an onboard HD 8570D solution that, while isn't the best in the world, can still put up somewhat of a fight in select titles, but there was certainly room for improvement. If a decent discrete graphics card was out of your price range, then you could also make use of the now defunct dual graphics feature, using something like this entry level HD 6450. Essentially you could cross fire an entry level AMD card like this one with the integrated processor graphics for a boost in performance, without having to pay for a better GPU. This is a feature that is sadly no longer incorporated into modern Ryzen APUs, but it's not really a big deal as Crossfire, just like Nvidia's SLI, can be more trouble than it's worth, not to mention a lot of games don't even support them anymore, both Crossfire and SLI that is. Nonetheless, I thought we'd take a look back at what sort of performance gains you could expect if you paired a quad-core A8 6600K with a terrible HD 6450. For these tests, I've compared both the HD 8570D graphics and HD 6450 graphics cards separately, and then combined both of them in dual graphics mode to see how things differ. To set up dual graphics, first you have to look online to find which APU supports which card, then it's just a matter of installing the card in the PC and keeping the HDMI or whatever input cable you use connected to the motherboard's output. The dual graphics mode can then be enabled through the Catalyst Control Center. So let's get into the games. The gameplay here isn't representative of any setup scenario as each result has been compiled into a sort of table for easy readability. First up it's Crisis. I've used games that not only run on the HD 6450 and 8570D graphics, but ones that should support multi-GPU configurations. Crisis ran at 30fps with the high settings using just the processor's onboard HD 570D graphics. I should also mention now that these graphics are better than the HD 6450, much better in fact, especially as I'm using a 1GB DDR3-6450. In dual GPU mode, performance was better than that of the 6450 on its own, but the best result came from leaving the 6450 out of the system altogether. I forgot how bad this card is to be honest though, I didn't expect this much of a gap between it and the onboard 8570D solution. Yeah, dual GPU mode doesn't give us a boost in performance here, but things are about to get better. In GTA 5, the 6450 once again suffers even at the low settings and 720p resolution. I can almost hear it screaming help me as I continued my drive towards the Los Santos countryside. The built-in HD 8570D graphics hold up fairly well, averaging 35 FPS. This was increased to 40 FPS in dual GPU mode, so it certainly seems like this is a great way to improve the HD 6450's performance if you have one. Upgrading the GPU would still make more sense than buying an A6 6600 CPU these days though, especially just to pair it with this entry level card. GTA 5 certainly shows some improvements though, so things are looking up. Now I wasn't going to include CSGO because every forum post I read led me to believe that the results would be disastrous. Now don't get me wrong, they certainly were with the 6450 on its own, but combining the card and the 8570D integrated graphics in dual graphics mode actually gave us a nice performance boost. The extra 10 FPS brings us close to 60, but not quite. I ran the benchmark workshop map for these tests too to ensure everything was identical and everything else was of course the same including the dual channel DDR3, 8 gigs of this stuff to be precise. I've heard reports uh, differing regarding the performance of Crossfire in Fallout New Vegas and although this one actually ran fine on the 6450 by itself as well as the 8570D there was no difference in dual GPU mode so maybe the odd frame here or there but yeah it's what I'd consider a sensible margin of error. I guess that answers my question regarding multiple GPUs and this game. It's nice to see the 6450 recording some decent numbers for once though. This is just essentially a graphics adapter after all but then again Fallout New Vegas will run on almost any PC. 
our penultimate result comes from this classic, Battlefield Bad Company 2. Now I've seen a few old benchmarks that incorporate dual GPU results in Crossfire, so I was expecting a nice performance bump here, but we actually lost frames, just like in Crisis. The result was still okay, and we were seeing 60, sorry, 50 frames per second. <laughs> I was hoping a little bit there, but the best bet here seemed to just be running the game with the onboard iGPU and nothing else. The 8570D actually handled it pretty well with very close to 60 FPS. Even the 6450 on its own hit near 30 FPS, so it was all round a okay set of results. Just not quite in the way I would have hoped, but there we go. On to our final game test then, Call of Duty Black Ops. This is the original 2010 version. Now again I've seen Crossfire benchmarks online so I went into this thinking that there would be a nice boost and there sort of was, I guess. We saw an additional 12 frames per second when combining the 6450 and HD 8570D which was probably one of the better results today, although the 1% low result was a bit worse and I did notice an overall more stuttery feel to the game. Now this may hinder competitive play but I'm not sure how many people are still playing this competitive in 2020. If you do though, and you use both an A8 6600K and 6450 by some random chance, then you'll be pleased to know that there are improvements to be seen by putting them together. Now you could of course use a better card than the 6450 providing your APU of choice supports it and you'd probably see better results but there is still some improvement and fun I should add in enabling this now defunct feature even if the results don't always go the way you hope. All that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you ever used this feature back in the day. Maybe you still do. Maybe you've still got an APU like this one, along with an entry-level GPU in your system, and maybe you're getting pretty decent gains from it. Of course, let me know your results down in the comments if that is the case. I think the best dual GPU setup you can have would probably be something like the A10 7850K and an R7 250. The thing is you can't always go past a certain graphics card. I think the R7 240 or R7 250 would have been the best combination you could have with something like an A10 in order to get the most out of this setup. But even then, I think you're probably going to see sort of similar gains in terms of frame rates as you did here you know in those titles where you see 10 extra fps with a discrete graphics card added to the integrated graphics i don't think you're going to see much more than that even if the hardware is different it's going to do better in general of course it is but yeah you're you're going to be limited as to how far you can actually go in terms of performance and you may just be better off pairing one of those low-end cards with a better processor to begin with. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, check out the Random Gaming in HD merch if you like, there's a link down in the description, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one when I think we'll be taking a look at a Windows 98 gaming PC, so yeah, we're going to need the duster for this one.